So this is a help video for writing an, an MYP criteria B in science. Obviously, um, things are dependent upon the teacher and the task. So do be careful that you clarify with your own teacher what you need to put in it. But for me, uh, and I'm trying to give a, a fairly generic overview here, remember that your criteria B your criteria B and your C are an MYP thing and that they're leading into, in the IB diploma programme, they're leading into what we call an IA, uh, where you come up with your own question. In MYP, often your question is guided by your teacher and your topic. Question is topic related. Uh, designed to provide you with some teaching, some learning opportunity there. In the diploma program, you pick any question you want from the entire physics program or even related to the physics program. But that's what's happening. The criteria for this is 12 pages, max. If you go above that, then you're not being concise. You're providing, you're showing, if you go above, you're showing that you don't know how to filter info, right? Um, so we want to be keeping it to 12 pages for B and C in the MYP at least really. Um, your level of knowledge is probably slightly less. So I think a B and a C should mount to roughly 10 pages at like a font 11, yeah? Which means a B should be about five pages in length. In those five pages, you are going to tackle this rubric. Your rubric may be laid out slightly different, but this one is, is laid out to show section one, the research question and introduction. Um, for the lowest marks, you simply state a problem or you write a question. Later, for outline, we really want to be writing a problem and it should include the independent variable and the dependent variable and it should kind of like start to touch on the problem. Um, for 5-6, you're going to describe the problem, which means you're going, to, you're going to introduce the context of the experiment, the relevance behind what you're doing and why you want to know the answer. And then the, the last bit for the top mark, the 7-8, you will explain a problem. So you're going to provide an in, a context and you're going to give reasons and causes and effects. So you're really going to provide a, a detailed bit of background research that links back to your context. Okay? So if we go to um, our writing and so, so for BI, so B part one, um, we need a research question, we need a context, um, and we need some research, some background research. Um, I'm actually going to clear a bit of space between those. Your research question should generally be laid out in the format to what extent does, oh, to what extent does, or you could change that and substitute it for how, how does, and then you say your independent variable. Remember, this is the thing you're going to change. Um, so a, a scenario that I'm posing to my class right now is that we're going to look at a car rolling down a ramp. And we're going to see to what extent does the surface area of the car affect the time for it to roll down or the mass of the car affect how long it rolls down. And then we're going to link it to the scenario of a real car. Um, so in this scenario, to what extent does and the variable you're going to change, we could be changing the mass of what? Of a small... Um, wooden science trolley. To what extent does 
the mass of a small wooden science trolley affect the um, speed or velocity, if we want to be better, affect the velocity of the car after rolling down a ramp that is two meters long at an incline of let's say 30 degrees. So you could end your sentence here. Yeah? You could say real simple how does the mass of a car affect the final velocity? Now you could say that, but that's not clear what we're talking about. What, what car are we talking about? Affect the final velocity, final after what's happened. So what this scenario up here is trying to um, do, the speed is the dependent variable. Um, what we're trying to do up here is we're trying to provide more, more clarity. We're trying to be specific in our scenario. Yeah? Um, so that's... That's what that is all about. So that's a good question. It's long, your question will be fairly long. You might, you might choose to sort of identify a topic. You might say acceleration of a car down a ramp. So that straight away people can see what's this, what's this all about without having to... Then they can read the research question and get a good understanding of, of what scenario we're dealing with. And then you can provide it with some context. So who cares? I was once, um, once told by a, a biology teacher in a, in a school, uh, Saeed, um, that, and he said um, that... I'm trying to think what his family name is. Oh dear, how have I forgotten? Um, but he said, who is waiting for results of your study? Yeah? Now, for NYP again, the teacher's telling you what field to do it in and roughly what question. And like with my one, the reality is we have the results for this experiment. So kind of no one is waiting for it, but people, there is a context that we're putting it in. There, is, there are some people that would care about the results of a similar study. So we could say people like um, car designers are, a car designer, um, maybe uh, like at my scenario, we're based in the UAE. And so I'm looking at the UAE's uh, 2030 vision for a sustainable future. So we're looking at um, environmentally friendly You can't design an environmentally friendly car or an efficient car a fuel efficient car You can't design a fuel efficient car or an environmentally friendly car if you don't know what affects its acceleration. Every car is going to have to accelerate up to a speed. We need to know what affects it. So we have to do some experimental work to discover that. I'm sure you can already predict in your head, well, a heavy car would, would, would take more to accelerate it. The engine of a heavy car would need to be bigger to make it accelerate. And bigger engines typically use more fuel. So you can already predict vaguely what's going to happen, but we're giving it some context here, yeah? And we're gonna, we're gonna, the clever bit is, if we say how, that's fine, but we know that a heavy car will 
be slower at speeding up. If we say to what extent does, then we're, we're asking the question, is there an upper limit? Is there like a peak point where, does it have a big impact or a small impact? We know it has an impact, but how much? So to what extent is a, is a superior phrasing because it identifies that there might, that we already know the connection, but we don't know the re exact relationship. Now, now we provide some research. Um, this is things you're going to research. Um, you might look at like aerodynamics in this scenario. Um, you're going to look for any relevant formula, especially in um, physics. So we're going to be using the acceleration is change in velocity over time. You're going to be looking at that sort of formula. You want units. Um, you're going to want to look at um, types of road surface, types of surface, and the effect that that has on um, on it. So you're going to do you're going to do type of surface. You're going to explain. You're going to describe the effect, and you're going to link to experiment or link to your scenario. That's this sort of, these three bullet points need to be done for this, for this, and for this, yeah? Um, I would say, realistically, this whole setup, you should now be at page one, or page 1.5. If you've only done half a page, then I question whether you can really, I mean, I look at the length of my question, that's like, this, this whole bit is going to be like paragraph one, isn't it? This is probably going to be paragraph two. And then this is going to be paragraphs three, four, maybe five. Yeah. Um, if you're at half a page and you probably only managed three paragraphs, so you probably only just touched on the start of the research. Yeah. Um, depending on your, the way you do it, you may choose to rearrange the order of this. It's absolutely fine to do that. Some teachers like it in a specific order. I think if you're given the question or you're given the topic, then you're probably going to put the question first, then the content, context, then the research. You might choose to move the question to after because you might decide that you're going to explain the scenario, do some research, and while you're doing that, the question comes to your mind, and you're like, ooh, I've got a really good question I want to ask. Um, that's the proper scientific way of doing it, to do some research and then go, I wonder what the effect of this is. So that's part one. Point to note, references. From the second you start doing a piece of work that's going to be submitted, have yourself a Word document and every time you open up a website and read it, just even if you don't use the website directly, you've read it, so just note that web address down and the date and time that you accessed it and then you can um, decide later if you feel you need to put it in your, your bibliography. The bibliography in the diploma programme falls into the 12 pages. So don't, um, don't write too much. But a good, well-researched um, topic will have a couple of references. I think for a criteria B in physics, minimum of three, between three and six, is a good number of sources to have looked at. Um, Two is probably at the lower end of it. I don't think anyone should be going above eight. Um, but yeah, three to six is a really good number of sources to have in your study. I wouldn't be upset. If I looked at someone's work and saw three, I'd be like, cool, you've looked at a couple of sources. Well done. Try to limit the amount of direct quotes you use. Obviously, formula and unit. Um, 
you might not quote this formula, you might use this formula, but you might not provide a source for it because it's a fairly commonly known one. But I would find a website anyway and just say that that's where you got it from. Um, if you've been taught it directly in your lessons, you probably don't need to reference it. But um, if in doubt, find it somewhere and reference it. Uh, so that was part one. So let's look at B, I, I, part two. Just go back to this structure again. Um, so this is our hypothesis or our prediction. Um, it might want to be laid out in an if-then style format and you might want to include because and for the real top marks, basically five to eight is just about how good is your scientific reasoning and explanation uh, the IB kind of have a bit of ambiguity here. For 7, 8, it has to be correct, uh, which might imply that it doesn't have to be correct here. Well, yeah, but I think you still need to be relatively correct. You still need to um, give in your reason, but I think this is, this is like a whole explanation rather than just correct. Um, so I'm going to go back to here. So here we just write if, and then you put your independent variable. If independent variable increases, then you write your dependent variable will, and you decide what's going to happen. So you have to fill in the blanks here. Uh, most commonly in physics, we're going to say it's going to increase or decrease because. And you're going to draw out some information from your research and you're going to pop it down here to provide your explanation as to why you think that will happen. Um, you may even choose to link in the formula. That would be really good. If you're, able, could, if you're able to link in the formula, that's fantastic. Because then you can sort of say, well, this is what I'm expecting. This is what my results will, will kind of look like. This is the graph I'm expecting. Um, so, if, in the, so in my scenario, if the mass of the car increases, then the... Uh, Final velocity will be smaller because more force is required to cause acceleration in the car. Also, more mass means more, whoop, more downward force, therefore greater friction. Now there is a friction equation. So you might then choose to include in here, I didn't mention that actually earlier, you might then include friction, yeah? So you might actually be going back to part one and, and providing greater depth now that you've realised something and I've just realised it. Hopefully you'd spend longer writing this than my 30 seconds so you would um, you'd cover all the bases. So that's your, um, that's your prediction. Uh, you may have to quote stuff in here but if you've kind of quoted it earlier in your study, then I, I think you'd be okay. I certainly wouldn't be penalising you if you use a formula or a theory that you've, you've talked about up here. If you then refer to it again down here, I think you've covered your bases. Um, but put the, red, the reference in again. Um, that's probably only going to be half a page. So we're up to two pages now. Really. You might be at two and a half pages. Probably not though. Um, and our next section then, part three. Let's go 
rid of some of my annotations. Part three is the variables. So a list of independent variables, dependent variables and control variables. How to manipulate those variables and how the data will be collected. How you'll get sufficient data and you need to describe that um, and explain. So, um, so I think it should be like that. You should have you should little side heading variables. Then you should say independent variable. You should state it. You should in brackets have the increments um, and why you selected. So for example, I'm going to do it in a different colour for, for for what I would actually put. I'd say mass of car, I'd say like 600, 700, 800, 900 and 1,000 um, grams. Uh, the car, new sentence, the car is uh, 500 grams unladen, as in with nothing else on it. Uh, or it might be like 550 or something, it's never going to be 500 exactly. Uh, 550 grams at Leyden. Um, so mass will be added to give a round start value of 600 grams and then 100 gram masses can be easily added in the classroom environment. You're unlikely to be adding three tons to your car because you just don't have a car available to you that you can do that. Um, you're not gonna be going out and using an actual car you're going to represent the actual car with a small car in the lab and you're going to do the test with that and then apply it to the unknown scenario of a big car. Um, uh, 100 gram increments are large enough to see a change in results. You might not know that. You might actually have to get some equipment out and have a play with it to find that out. You might try adding, um, you might try adding 10 grams and see what happens and add 100 grams and see what happens. Sometimes an easy way to do it is to, to take the mass of 600 and the one at 1000 and just test it and see. And if there's a difference, if you get the results, just do it once. If there's a difference between this one and this one, the results, then you know that you've got a big enough range of results, range of increments. If you do 600 and then you add 10 grams and you get 650, you might not see a difference. And so that isn't a big enough range, yeah? Um, then you'll move on to your dependent variable. And it says you have to talk about how you will, so what is it? So in my scenario, it was final velocity. Then you talk about how it'd be measured. Um, so in this scenario, we're rolling the car down a ramp, yeah? And then we're gonna allow the car to come off the ramp and record its velocity over a one meter distance, yeah? So final velocity um, recorded by measuring time to roll one meter once the car has left the ramp. Yeah, recorded by measuring time to roll one meter once the car has left the ramp using, and then using formula uh, speed equals distance over time, yeah? Where S is displacement. 
V is velocity and T is time. So that's how you'd measure it, yeah? Not just saying I would find final velocity. Tell me how you would find the final velocity. What parameters are you going to put in place to make sure that it's done? Um, yeah. You might even add here, once the car, or immediately after. Immediately after the car's left the ramp. Rather than it rolling down the ramp and then you record the speed somewhere down here and you're like, well, it slowed down loads by the time we got there. So no longer recording the speed. Uh, yeah. Get rid of that. Um, then you're going to do control variables. I like control variables laid out in a, in a table. Uh, you, you list the variable. So this is control variables. You list the variable. You talk about the effect and then the, the measure to control. So things that might affect it, let's say um, the, the angle of ramp. If we had a steeper ramp, i.e. the ramp is higher, this is a shallow ramp, this is a steep ramp. If we had a steeper ramp, steeper ramps would cause a greater increase in velocity of the car. And if you can, you give a, a proper science since it falls through a greater change in gravitational potential energy. So if you can, you try and give a reason for it. You might not be able to. You can probably say the effect, this first bit, up to here. You can probably say the effect, but for these seven, eight people, we should be given the science reason for at least some of our control variables. So your, me your method of control I don't know what I've said then, but that should be method of control. Is we're going to um, set the ramp to 30 degrees using a protractor compared to horizontal. Or easier, you might set different way of doing it, set top of ramp to 0 0.5 meters. Either one of those, pick, pick your method. There's, there's always gonna be different ways of controlling it, um, but pick your method and then that's what you put in your method of control, yeah? I would expect to see um, at least one, uh, but that isn't very good. Ideally, somewhere up to five. Three to five is good. Some experiments, there is only three. Some experiments, it's really hard to find um, that five one. So if you are running out, then you've got to assume that there aren't many and therefore the teacher will run out. You, if there are only three control variables, you cannot be penalized for only writing three. In the diploma program, so the, grade, uh, the year 13, grade 12 students in the diploma program, it just says, the, it says something like, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it says something like the main factors affecting it are considered. So as long as you've got the main ones, you're good to go. Um, I'm going to come back to uh, writing a good method in another video because I feel like it's a bit longer.